recording. Hello, and welcome to the exciting time that is a training session with me, Willow. Uh, introduce yourselves. Okay, fine. Sure. No, it's just me. <laughs> no one else is here. It's just me. I'm doing this on my own. Right. So, uh, we're... we're uh, tutoring about Norska and Greenskins today. Right now, uh, I'm going to go over some good counter builds with the other two popular factions being High Elves and Coasts. Uh, I shall start with High Elves versus Norska, then do High Elves versus Greenskins, then I'll do Coast versus Norska and Coast versus Greenskins. To begin, High Elves versus Norska. Obviously Norska have a lot of things weak to fire and High Elves have a lot of fire damage. So that is quite helpful in the fact that they can have just a lot of natural counters in the facts. Especially skin wolves, which are known for being a very popular unit for Norska. Very easily countered. Quite nicely, in fact. Now, for lords, um, I might go for Imerick, personally. Either on dragon or on something that used probably on dragon, because he's a beast on his dragon. Uh, Teclis is also a capable caster and supportive role. With his abilities, his spells... Uh, this items this one not so good, but this item gives a huge boost to power recharge and the fact that you can be spamming out some of the best spells in the game like nets Flocks of doom earth blood regrowth just really good really good all around with techless Especially if you put him as bird because then he does magical and fire damage. So he wrecks skin wolves quite nicely um, Any other recommendations for lords? Do you think honestly? I think only those two maybe maybe Tyrion But I can only really see Imric or techless any thoughts from anyone else? Alarial. Alarial? Magic damage. Could be good. Alarial. And she's also quite hard to catch if you just put her on a pigeon and fly her around. Very capable um, thing to do. To just also, also zip the around. might help deal with the actual, like, the brunt of the berserkers and the Norskin mm. infantry that would just chop their way through. Through normally, yeah. Also, Dragon Prince blob really bad in that match. Dragon Larry. Prince blob. Okay, so just go like sort of what what lord what, what would you take with that? Would you take Alarial and then Fireborn and then you can both take two Dragon Prince users pretty disgusting. This sort of thing. Because this does beat nearly everything apart from familiar with great weapons, I feel like this doesn't yeah. beat familiar with great weapons, um, which I feel like I could pick. That. But yeah, yeah that's you need Sisters of Avalon to You basically run that around and kill everything else. That'll mop up and... with skin bulls, that'll mop up all their infantry, that'll mop up everything. Um and if the the only thing you need to watch out for is skirmish cavern here. In which case, you run back to your archers. Just to uh, say to everybody who's watching, this is Lexus. He's never usually here, but he we mentioned no. high elves and he jumped in immediately. Yeah, elves. So, elves. I know this. Yes. Star of Avalon, would you bring? Yeah. Yeah. And then. Of course. It's because you want to heal those himself. horses. Yeah, if you bring a Larry, you bring Star of Avalon. That's yeah, just, yeah, it's almost okay. a given, yeah. What kind of front line would you go for against Norska? Um, to be honest, I don't really think you need Silver and Guard here. In all yeah, honesty, you just mm. want I think you can bring them, but I think they're a bit like if you're Rangers. definitely doing this blob. If you're doing the Alario builds, they're too expensive. Um, probably just a mix of spearmen and rangers, probably like three spearmen and two rangers yeah. or something. Yeah, that sort of general thing. And you've got a bit of funds you can sort of alter around for for yourself. But this is the general got... sort of idea against Norska. Flying uh, around with Alario can't really be caught by anything because they don't. They're pretty sure she will outrun Manticore any Manticore, day of the week. Yeah. And oh, that's yeah, the only thing that can really be damaging her. Apart from the occasional javelin, but if you keep away from those, you should be alright. Um, Spearmen in the front line to ward off any ranged units and to make sure they don't be thrown at your rangers or sisters of Avalon. They can also hold longer. Rangers will do nicely against marauders. They won't win against berserkers, but they'll do quite a bit of damage. Uh, sisters of Avalon, your ranged unit, shoot them at the monsters, at the unshielded berserkers, unshielded champions. Is anything unshielded? Pretty much, I guess, especially good against mammoths. Skin wolves as well will do very nicely, just really good at destroying everything, but make sure they don't get caught by like hounds. You probably want dragon printers always in the back line. You don't want to try and flank with the dragon printers, you want to just keep them just in the back. Defending the sisters and then throwing themselves onto a unit at a time. So you just have this sort of squad rolling around, and then when they engage in something, you can heal it with Alarial. Start what about the Alarial? Um, our spear unit, or the big guys, what they're called. Science of Method. No, no, no the, uh, not the spearmen, the spe I can't remember what they're called. Phoenix Guard. Yeah, our Phoenix gun. It's quite oh, expensive. yeah, because they explode when they die. Yeah, it could They're be capable, but a boat is also something that could catch them, and the problem is, is they aren't going to catch much in the Norsk. Most yeah. all, all the Norsk mobility can run away pretty nicely. 
and anything that wants to fight it is going to be far superior at fighting a halberd unit and has no armor to begin it's with. So it's also a just a lovely target for pendulum. Actually, boats. the Keepers of the Flame would be the best infantry unit in the game because when Zerg did that video, he tested it, and technically they beat or they used to beat all other infantry units in the game, even mm -hmm. though yeah. they're halberds for some reason. Probably so they're they're not not them, because they they explode when they, they die. Explode, so they explode, so they damage. I also think they're, but that's like getting. Like when they're engaged in melee, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. But the mammoths is going to run them over. The skin wolves are just going to run away. Uh, the berserkers might actually try to somewhat uh, trade somewhat nicely against them. Like yeah. just cost-effective perspective. Like they cost half, and they will kill some. Did you save that willow? <laughs> yes, I did. Thank you, you animal. Uh, maybe use that just go T for like a <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a techless build, and then just like move on. To a techless the, build would be pretty similar to Alario because techless does these days serve very similar roles to Alario. Only the sheet. he's a bit less oh. supportive, more damage dealing. So I think. Um, no one's what's going on here. The, We're telling little build builds for tournaments. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Take away when you bring techless. I think you don't need the fireborn because you can give them fire damage. Yeah, you can apply fire, but these still come with anti-life. But even then, you're saving. You a lot wouldn't of money. need the net though. Uh, Dragon princes as long will still be. I'm pretty sure they still be skimmers even without anything on them. Yeah, mate, that would be the case. Yeah, would you, you want regrowth? regrowth? You want the you fire, want like legs. maybe the fire damage, and then you want the the net. Probably. Uh, probably don't need that because that never works. Uh, this this would be generally it. Maybe for that one. Yeah, because one of the uh, things I always found kind of important with um, Hyles fighting against Norskin is keeping keeping the martial prowess on your front line. Keeping it going. Be yeah. Because uh, the. So this could be a sort of thing with Techless as well. Um, I had a pretty similar thought as well process with just like, you could also go the old fire meme build with a Imric on a dragon and then a fire caster as well. It's a sort of oh, similar, similar ideal, just less healing. Yeah, this is a fun build then. Double sisters as well as... Like, Double sisters is pretty good in this build, to be honest, I think. Just I don't think you need that. I think you can go one if you're nervous. You have to worry about yeah, like... Um, I'm bringing a lot of wolves. Sm smashy wolf wreck smashing through your front line. Yeah, but also, like, if they bring a wolf rig, that's a great target to shoot at on the way up. So he's mm. going to lose most of his health, get pinned by the dragon princes, and or get hit with Imrig on his dragon. Yeah, right that's kind of how you counter mammoths with a build, is, like, the mammoths always just want to push through you. You immediately just stack a dragon prince on it and delay it through. They can't move, yeah. Because how messes work. Alright, that's the general idea for Hales vs. Norska. Now moving on to High Elves versus Green Skins. <laughs> Go on, Alexis, give us your knowledge. Uh, you die. Greeny, okay, you die. Nice. You I actually die. don't know which of this matchup I'd very rarely get it ever. Uh, it's painful. Mm, I can um, imagine. Would you take uh, Techless on a Phoenix? I feel like the terror causing. I fighting. think the only reasonable build I've ever did with was double Arcane Phoenix. So Arcane Phoenix and Techless on an Arcane Phoenix. Hmm. That it's sounds like scum. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, that's true, though. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting, but that's like, I think that's the probably the most reasonable build I've ever used against Green Skins. What kind of front line would you think? Um, I think, I'm trying to remember what game this was, so I'm pretty sure I had Swordmasters in it. Swordmasters? Uh, Interesting choice. Yeah, I had well, one they do. Swordmasters. They do have and the, uh, I think it was three, I want to say it was three Spearmen. Um, then it was three Illyrian Reaver Archers. Yeah, those uh, horseback boys. That's probably the main part. The that's rest the main basis. Probably change, but yeah, that's generally you need your skirmishers because Greenskin skirmishers will be, um, but you beat their skirmish, which is one thing. This is one thing you do better than them in. Mm -hmm. Um, everywhere else you kind of lose. Um. If they do stone trolls, you basically need Techless and your Phoenix to like, gang up on them. kill them. Yeah, yeah. I, just them actually. I just realized the Illyrian uh, Reaver Archers have 30 melee attack. You actually yeah, can, they're... You could just run yeah. into the Goblin Riders and just mm. kill them. Uh, I don't know how well they do with the Poison. No, they don't win. Not, not without yeah. the Poison. Yeah, not the Goblin Spider Riders, but any, like, the Wolf, wolf Riders. Yeah, Wolf, wolf Riders, riders. Wolf riders. Yeah. Yeah. got them strong gust of wind will blow them over. Uh, also, That's what true. you want to do in this matchup is then use the skirmish phase of the game. So you would not engage your front line until you try to deal as much damage with yes. the skirmish as possible to their skirmishes, to or well, anything you can actually like do damage to. So like, don't fire at trolls because stone trolls are just going to regenerate to the damage that you're going to do to them. So you want to like 
look for light targets basically so oh, like sure skir they their skirmish care if, if they have some skirmishers behind yeah. so don't fall into the trap because i think like... grom is pretty common in this matchup don't fall into the trap of trying to like shoot at uh, grom because of his item that gives 40 percent uh, damage yeah. resistance and he also has regeneration so you need like both the phoenix and tactus probably to goon him out and they he will just net you down or uh, with okay. nasty skulkers or rampage you um, or the best do thing that's... you can kind of do here, which is what I usually hope for, is if you try and goon Grom, they'll usually pop the damage resist pretty early, immediately just run away and let it run out, and then go attack the stone trolls instead. Um, because 9 times out of 10, when Grom gets attacked, he'll probably run away to try and get to a different unit to like try and walk you off. Um, a lot of the time, if you kind of come from a decent angle, he can't get to the stone trolls, so go somewhere else. As soon as he leaves, just leave him alone. As soon as that buff goes off, because it's just pointless, just go away and attack the stone trolls, and then when his buff wears off, go and pressure him again. I feel like cool. uh, having a handful of like basic archers might also be useful because of the very low armor that most green skins have. Yeah, yeah. but the protect of, protection of the archers is just really yeah, good. you just you just don't get to protect your backline against because green. yeah, high elves too expensive, green skins really cheap calf, really good calf that can beat you. So, just very difficult. If you can pull it off, I yeah, sure, but... Like, I guess you could bring, like, one unit of archers, because that would also help deal with any skirmishers you want to run up and shoot your swordmaster to hell with. Yeah, although they do actually have a uh, silver shield, oddly enough. I mean, bronze shield. Uh, uh, yeah, they do have bronze air shield. Yeah. And uh, also, they'll play pretty well against um, Biggins, or, like, a staple in most green skins build these days. Um, they do... They'll pretty much cleave through Biggins with no problem. Um, and if you have Savage Orcs, if you really think there'll be a lot of Savage Orcs, obviously you've got Techless with the Blazing Sword Rune. Um, so they cut through pretty much everything. If they meet Black Orcs, you're in for a bit of an issue because um, it's not a good. Well, they'll, they'll pretty much just hit each other until they die because they pretty much kill each other. Um, oh, you have the Arcane Phoenix for that. Yeah, you do basically don't want the Swordmasters. Normally, you think Swordmasters, oh, I kill my elite infantry with this. You want to fight all of their infantry except Black Orcs. Just move because it's not worth it for either of you. So they probably shouldn't do it either, but they'll probably try. I guess instead of two archers, just bring the one because at least that's manageable. And you can just stick it in the center of your like spear formation. New rank, yeah, just sort of a stronger part yeah. to it. And it functions as a constant like outsource of damage. Hmm. Especially if they bring savage orcs because they can like a, a basic archer yeah. can do a ton of damage. Put the damage on them, yeah. Right. Okay, so um, maybe on to the coast. Coast versus Norska. I mean, don't you want to talk about how Orcs and Norska beat High Elves? No, we've already kind of covered that. Oh, yeah, with yeah, the first we're session. I mean, it's a campus. long time ago, but... <laughs> yeah, it's a long time ago. doesn't mean it's not in streaming or anything, so people would have yeah. uh, no, that's a good missed point. that. Oh, well. We only have three Yeah, time's money, friend. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll be I, gone in like two like, uh, <laughs> Anyway, Maybe. Coast versus Norska. Yeah, the main thing you want to do is uh, Vamp Coast is pretty much delaying the inevitable of Norska reaching you. Right. Because most yeah, of the basically, are um, fairly fast. You can go for, uh, people often think, expect loot to harken on this old thing, and you might see a very large swarm of hunters. Uh, I think this is like an average amount of hunters you might see, because cheap archers always work fairly nicely against them. Um, Vampire Coast, and because that will do a lot of damage to Luther. Thing is, you know, there's a arm on this. Um, another choice is bringing Noctilus either on foot or the Colossus. I think all three options work pretty well. If you bring him on as Colossus, he is a large target, but the, the cannon damage that he can put out on anything is pretty good. And also, people will make the mistake of trying to goon him, and then you can just like swamp him with like um, zombie deckhand mobs. And if they're attacking Noctilus, then that's something that can defend itself. If you have other gun stuff, it's very hard to distract that if he's also going after Noctilus. Um, would you bring deck droppers here? You might bring deck, yes. You could probably very well bring deck droppers. Like, you just have to really keep them away from the skirmishness. But normally you could you could go for a bit of boat, or a bit of any of them to be honest with you. You could bring bombers because they do pretty, but usually you just want foot bombers to deal with berserkers and the likes. Yeah, I was going to say deck droppers because I feel like Norska for this matchup don't really bring skirmish cav. No, they probably I might like bring go, hunters. Yeah, hunters or javelins. Which you can usually get away from quite well. So something like this. Would, would probably, if they if they do bring skirmish camp, you can bring scurvy dog, but they'll loot. They um usually get out wolfed by all the other wolves that they'll bring. Yeah. Um, this sort of thing would probably be fairly normal. 
Uh, what else would you bring? You might be tempted with, with the depth guard buff. Might be tempted to bring a Uno depth guard, if not just some pole arms in the back. Maybe a Uno depth guard to sit with Nopolis. Do surprisingly well now. Uh, yeah, the death battle pole arms is really good now. They after the last buff, they got yeah. really, really actually decent. So you can use them now, even though in most of the videos you like don't see them terribly often because people are just like still a bit skeptical. Maybe on them. Um, also, yes, if you have suggestions for builds, just throw them in chat. And uh, because we are just going through the most popular faction, the la latest poll. So yeah, if you want any out. specific matchup against yeah. Norskin and Greenskin, if there's anything you want to. We'll get Bretonia Brit versus Norskin. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Anyway, this is the sort of build. I might bring double neck effects because, unlike regular cannons, will just they have so low morale that you often say they disintegrate as soon as they get touched by wolves. Actually, Whereas necrofex is yeah, go on. Yeah, I was going to point out that every time I've ever seen a cosplayer try and bring cannons, they always lose to Norska because they, the they're using too much money on a weapon system that can only do so much damage. Mm. Unlike that drop deck gunners who can run away from Norska, who don't unless they bring a Manticore, uh, they're not going to catch your drop deck gunners and the drop deck gunners can support each other if there if there's mana core too hmm. yeah or but not less can shoot them and of course necrofexes will hold their own pretty well in melee against um anything they have a fair decent amount of armor so even against skin wolves you'll find they do fairly well especially when they drop that zombie sp summon around them and um, the zombie summons for count noctilus if your back line is sort of, of course you have the front line of zombie deck hand mobs and then bombers and then you have these really just to sort of defend the backs of your bombers but if your backline is becoming overwhelmed because of how slowly zombies move, you have two zombie summons just to fill in those gaps in case something tries to run through into your bombers. You really want to try and defend those bombers because that's all you really have to melt the infantry. But like one volley of those on berserkers that blob up on your front line, you should be able to melt them. Don't be afraid to throw bombs into units that are engaging your zombies because destroying a unit of berserkers in exchange for a unit of zombies is very good trade-off. So that's what they're, they're there for the exact infantry killing power. Even These things will drop all the large... These things can tie up anything in the back line, and these two can drop mammoths, anything single entity wise. Do pretty good damage against skirmish cav as well. These ones because of the sort of shrapnel round they fire, or well, the triple shot. There's pretty good yeah, damage. Yeah, they, uh, they're like a they're like a generic cannon unit, except they fire all three shots at once. Yeah, with less accuracy, but it works pretty well against clumps of units yeah, or just anything yeah. big. I feel like it's a buff more than I'd say. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Good. If you guys do want these builds like later on in um, another format, you go to Everclastics videos. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Yeah. Okay, so um, no, Vampire Coast versus Greenskins. That's still a favorable matchup for the still coast. Still a favorable right? matchup for the coast, yes. That is yes. correct. Still... Actually, a lot of do I have the save? With a different build, though. Do I have the saved? I do not have the save. Damn. Oh well, Definitely. I'll save it now. Uh, something like I did share this idea with Lycus. It, it nuked uh, in caps dumb build. Uh, oh, was this when you went super try hard? Yeah, this is the one. And I had but like six. Uh, yeah, you had some, four some kind of fun it. build. Ugh. Get out. This is the sort of thing because Solostra, everyone Noctilus loses in melee with like most other greenskin lords. Um, and Luther gets shredded by the, because what the build here is for, for green skins, I actually have this saved. I'm sure I do. It's it probably like the I only do. original yeah. below build that you will see. Yeah, this this is the usual build you'll see. <laughs> this build is a lot of video. We found it. No, this is a lot of We found it. Slander. We found the video like minutes after Willow. But you yeah. see a spam of archers pretty much because yeah, Savage Orc Arrow Boys will beat dogs one in one on one combat. So this sort of thing does work pretty well as a backline because it defends itself against all coast flanking power except for Mongols but Mongols are so expensive that you throw it a bit to the back line. it's quite a risk because they get swamped by other tools because you won't be able to out mobility and um, so this sort of thing would be what you see as a leadership kit um, some basic zombie deck and front line sirenes work particularly well in this matchup if you keep them in the back line usually if you put them in the front line they're just going to get like fist of gork from an orc shaman or a brain buster but if you keep them in the back line usually the orc shaman is too far away to do anything to help so these can destroy squigs they can destroy spider riders they can tear out them off they can and then afterwards they can still just go around the flanks and maybe get into savage elf arrow boys if you want them to um, and the other big thing is you should bring the unit that does beat savage arc arrow boys which one is that? The MVPs, the deck dropper bombers. Oh yes, this is the one matchup where these are pretty <laughs> yeah, pretty good because useful. they trade very well with the archers. You might even Again, see like if you want 
three or four of these. If you want this orc build, I'm not joking. I'll just type into YouTube Coast vs. Orcs. Oh, and we'll you, be you yeah. I, I'm not joking. Not I am share serious. our ideas as a community. You're but, very um, right. The other thing is, what if uh, the Greenskins bring a Black Orc frontline since, well, as we point out, Coast does have trouble with armor piercing. Mm, apart from then their uh, gun department then. Yeah, yeah, other than bringing cannons or the more expensive ranged units, but the thing is, they'd have to bring those. Uh, Sirens like, are good there as well. Yeah, yeah I guess so, but fair. Fist of Gork though. Yeah, if they get Fist of Gork, obviously. That yeah, would if they get Fist of Gork, you need to run away. You need to run away. Yeah, and since they're immune to psychology, you can't terror out them, you can't do anything, they just keep fighting. This would be the sort of build that counters green skins fairly well. You can edit. I them share the build. Uh, I can share the build in chat because we don't okay. like we did something on. I'll save this. Uh, it's shared in Find a Mentor, guys. Okay, so this sort of thing works pretty well. These trade very well, even against skirmish cav. They they trade very efficiently, and then when they run out of ammo, they're just hounds to chase off units. So if anything runs away, you can just chase it off with them. These basically. Yeah, um, I would say um, see the. Well, you changed your build now because the the one you no, changed lost. Moved. Um, see this one. I think this is better on a bigger map. The build we've got here. Um, the smaller map, the one we did last time that had, I'm pretty sure it had towns and morgans on it. Was yeah, the, there's a um, there's a for, for this is this is a good one for for larger maps, for um, but yeah, for smaller maps, you might be also yeah, I'd say still smaller. Again, it's literally mostly the same build except yeah, I'll just reload towns and morgans. Yeah, yeah, it's a replacement of the range core for it's oh no, that's right. Well, apparently, we have a forty four roll now. Pog. Like, um, nice. So take away one unit of sirens. Yeah, one of these sirens, and then you might the see deck. like one, two, take away three, the halberds. I think. Three, take away the halberds. Yeah. That's something like that. Yeah, so, something like this is what you want to see um, as well in a smaller map situation. Actually, you probably drop the cannon as well, and then bring another, yeah. you know, mongol. Right maybe. Mortar, maybe. Ooh. Well, you've got the bombers to kill the archers with. True. You might just bring maybe a, yeah maybe another you know maybe drop a mongol threat. Could be pretty good because these this is. This will beat, as you can see, most of this. It'll beat the back line. It'll beat Cav pretty nicely. Um, even against Black Ox, Mongols do fairly well. So that works also well on a smaller map. That definitely works more. Um, in the larger map, you go for the other builds where you have more of a ranged focus and more defensive playstyle. This one, you almost have a, an aggressive playstyle where you can just sort of you can sit your front line down with the shade race and keep pecking off. Um, and then basically, when their front line engages your front line, then that's when their archers will be all alone. And then you can just sweep in around with Mongols and Scurvy Dogs and the Deck Drama Bombers, which will destroy them as well. Um, so Lostra is literally just here, pretty much just to summon these because they're very good against um, Greenskins because they're just they're terror causing um, Cav, which just do pretty well against infantry. So and, cycle um, charging into back lines or going after Savage Orc Archers because they deal magical damage. Against most kind of armies oh. against Coast as well. Um, when they bring that big, massive, cheap archer backline, mm -hmm. The way you usually, it's not usually defended that well because they want to tie you up and shoot you as much as they can. So their backline's usually like really lightly defended. So you just rush her straight forward and summon it behind them, and then the cavalry just goes and routes all the archers. Yes, that's that right. Is that all of this? That the matchups covered there? I believe so. Yes. I guess so. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because yeah, like, Cust doesn't really have a lot of variety they can really no. do to fight against this is about with variety as it comes it's this sort of flanking with mongols and yeah dogs where and usually it's just to, defensive yeah they have they have to sit and defend and hope like i said it, it's a mat it's just a matter of time in delaying the inevitable of them getting hit with infantry hmm. but so you can see here as well actually just a quick note on the fact that this is the green skin build usually to counter coast is this spam of archers um, the Black Orcs are there. You can switch Black Orcs out for big uns and uh, other things like that. And then you can maybe swap these out for, for um, Squigs instead. Like go more of a Squig centric. Um, and then you can just take some big uns instead. Really, the Black Orcs and the big uns are there just against like crabs and the likes. But you also have these just to shred um, crabs with. Well, these this will reduce the armor of them. And this can do a bit more damage to them. Then the Squigs, just because they're anti infantry, they can really crump through some of that chaff quite quickly. Actually, I was going to say that. Uh... Um, a couple of times against coast, I would just bring straight a front line of biggins, and they don't. None of their infantry can deal with it. No, no. But it's the same for orc boys as well. Same orc with orc boys. Be, yeah, basic orc boys. And then you can just play through. Yeah. 
But usually you want those shields just in case they go for a big gun line of things. Um, yeah. I believe you they move a bit you quicker beat at the same speed. Line by having so many, too many targets to shoot at situation. Hmm. And you can so sort of overwhelm them. The problem them. with Grimgor is if they brought Luther Harkin, he's just going to shoot him. Oh yeah, the problem with yeah, that, that's the problem with all green skin lords. Because of how many thing. matches I've played against you all, where you just like float over Grimgor and just shoot, and just bang. shoot him. You have these to cover where him. He's just oh. 316 no scoping you with this fucking op, which they downgraded to a Desert Eagle now. Yeah, now it's just slightly, ever so slightly worse. The reason why um, Grimgore is brought in this matchup usually is because the same thing's going to happen to all your lords, is you're going to get shot at. You're going to get shot at by Luther, you're going to get shot at by the Shade Wraith Gunners, or you're going to shell by something. It's so you take... Grimgore actually Grimgore has the armor and health. Actually has the fairly, and because he's usually the cheapest option, if he dies it's not too big of a loss. All Grimgore is really here to do is to go after the Lords, because he beats Luther in melee, I believe, even on his Terror Geist. Um, and he'll beat Noctilus any day of the week. So, yeah, but, he's but just there to beat playing, boys in melee. If, if you're playing Coast, the one thing you are trying to do is pick off... If you use Luther Ark and you want to pick off the Lord or the Caster. Caster, yeah. If you can get rid yeah. of that healing, that um, like, Vampire healing, whether or not that's in the form of Noctilus, or if it's a Vampire Fleet Captain, if you knock that out early, yeah, I'll usually secure you the rest of the game. Because that healing yeah, because is so important for coast, especially when you've got like ethereal units like yeah. these, which can really benefit from healing. Taking out early, it's very strong. Yeah, and and the leadership debuff on the enemy army, the, if it's not undead, is a big difference because you have the minus ten fear from all of your units mm. on top of that. So they break much easier and can be terror routed much easier. Mm. Well, um, I believe we have some replays to look at for for some more replays to look for, for um, green skins and Norska, and then we can move on to looking at some some multiplayer games with you people. Is there a Bretonia versus Norska replay? Is there a Bretonia? Uh, Why are you interested in this? I because uh, everyone says Norska beats Bretonia, and I don't see it. I, I do. Bretonia is so tough. Well, well while we're covering this, I think I actually have a saved build for Bretonia versus Norska. No, I Chelsea don't. Also, a saved build. Somebody's beaten him with it. No, the reason I, I the reason I check it is because I check, I tested it with Incap and no, I, I won every game. Build and I, I won. No, so, I won. Yeah, well, yeah, sure you won. I, I mean, the first game, yeah, you did catch me up. But then the second game, I specifically didn't count a build. I bought a build I know would probably lose, and it did. I usually yeah. uh, found uh, Bretonia is. Yeah, yeah, I immediately wouldn't do this. With. I immediately wouldn't do this. I this is a I came up with a very heavy infantry oh, army. God trick and field. Okay, so this isn't this isn't the anything I would do. Okay, yeah, that's nice. But this is something I came up with. It's a very heavy infantry army. Okay, but this you is mean something that you searched up off of YouTube. No, I did not search this up off of YouTube. <laughs> uh, save wait, save this quickly when you've done it. I'll show you what, we, what? I'll show you what I brought against it. Okay, um, I believe it was something. Oh, actually, no, it was some of these. I think it was this sort of thing. There's a very heavy infantry army. You can audit, edit some monies around in certain places. I think it was actually a paladin instead of this extra unit. Why do I feel like that's a bad idea against the faction that has a lot of? Because surprisingly, men at arms do pretty damn good against them. Um, men at arms trade so well. They trade like, yeah, yeah, men at arms are, especially are when you're getting grey elite. Um, I might drop the field trebuchets for more care but, eventually. But I'm thinking more like if they decide to, like I guess if they bring berserkers, you can outshoot them. I like if I bring this actually. Yeah, this sort of thing maybe. I'll save this pretty quick, quickly. The sort of thing we sort of have actually you kind of do so well in the infantry fight because you have the mortis defense and um, the mortis engine effect of the Fey, and you have also her healing shield of thorns, melee attack buffing ability. Got this is the thing I had is, but I don't know how Norska beat Bretonia. You don't know how Norska, so you don't think Norska does very well here. Right, so go back. Right, so this yes. is what I brought. This is the build that I brought. So Loan on his big mount. Um, abilities take off Full Seeker, um, and he can take off the Rally Shield thing as well. Uh, I forget the name, but it's Andrew Gordon, that's that. Um, items take his sword, or shield even, that's sword. Um, life Mage on the horse, with usual, like, about to judge what you know here. Okay, Maybe um, and then uh, Frontline 5 Peasant Mob. Uh, then two poison arrows and four fire, fire arrows. Then um, companions of Quinells, <coughs> Knights of the Lionhearted, one Knights of the Realm and one Quest of Night. And I can't remember what I did with the last of it. 
this sort of thing, interesting. What did I do with that? What did I do the last thing? Maybe some more infantry. That's, that's mm -hmm. a lot of peasants yeah, you got not there. A lot, not a lot of front line holding power. Uh, you know. you'd, uh, you'd be amazed how well that did. Yeah, I don't really have much of a front line to fight you with. <laughs> yeah, so basically, see the front line of Norska? Uh, yeah. Basically, whatever they bring loses. Because see if they bring like a Berserker heavy front line, you shouldn't. You yeah. shred them with archers. If they bring champions or marauders, you just run your cav through your peasants and shred them with your cavalry. Just the two quest of the knights will kill any infantry by themselves. So you put the quest of knights forward and leave your knights of the realm in the back. Because knights of the realm, even the base version, I found out the other day, trade really well against skin yeah. moves. And knights of the light heart will slaughter them. Yeah, yeah fair, the magical skin damage. Skin yeah, really, really need assistance. But even knights, even normal knights of the realm will nearly yeah, yeah. Do pretty well. very good. The problem um, with skin wolves is they're low leadership and, and then make them good. Basically, see if there's ever... Like, see when you're quest the knights are killing the infantry, if they ever go heavy calf flank by that time, it's just so dead that the five peasant mob will just hold it there and it just keeps getting shot. Um, the only thing, even if they bring Femir, get shot. If they bring skin wolves, get shot. If they go double mammoth is the only thing, uh, which I was thinking about, you just throw uh, Lewin and Tie it down a and then shoot the, on top of it shoot and pop his, pop his sort of crone that gives minus 30 armor and then shoot it with archers. Yeah. That sounds pretty good as well. And it's just like, I don't know, I've struggled with this so much. I can't be this at first. It's, just, I don't oh, know. it's literally, it so it's much. technically like a giant Death Star build. I mean, the build I as Norska so I'd bring against um, Petonia. If I'm just going off of memory, it would be like... How do you know it would just be two, actually? Um, Or did I squeeze in the money there? <laughs> it was something like this. Just wow, this sort of thing. I like how Will is committing his, like, his one mistake, even on stream. Oh, no yeah. caster. <laughs> yeah, you have got no caster, Willow. But, uh, hey, I was, uh, uh, was going to say that, like, to do that army, you'd have to, like, either pull, draw a lot of that cavalry out so you can get to the, um, because the thing is, Norska doesn't have any heavy cavalry to punch through those peasants and just evaporate them. Hmm. That's that's the big doesn't problem. Like, if, yeah, if, even if, then, if, marauders will get stuck on peasants for quite a long time. Yeah. Hmm. No, what I'm talking about is uh, like they don't they're not like chaos with like uh, chaos knights with lances that could just evaporate a front line of peasants and just keep going through. Yeah. Sort I'm of also thing. sure the other thing, which is kind of the problem, because I'm pretty sure Lewin actually can slap Throg. Can he? Desert. I'm pretty uh, sure it's well, yeah, but with the, is with, with the idea is you have the Femir support to as well back yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, and fight and die. So, but uh, thing I figured out uh, the other day as well, uh, companions and friends will shred from you. Yeah, usually you you have you don't send Femir on their own. Usually you have like something in front of them to soak most of the yeah, damage, like spearmen yeah. or the uh, wolves. Just depending. in general, though, like I feel like the quest yeah. knights. Yeah, them. but I don't think regular quest knights do as well. I think. Uh, even quest knights do a disturbing amount of damage. Yeah, but I don't think they win. Yeah. They don't win, but I mean, they don't need to win. Look at all the archers they have. Yeah, they have all the archers, pal. Because yeah. then you run into the scenario of like, well, what if you're bringing a, a Manticore heavy build as well? Which, uh, once your infantry is about to start getting shot at, you throw the Manticores in to tie them up, but they'll just separate and start trying to shoot at the Manticores, which have a an actual missile resist on top of the armor that they've yeah. got. Yeah, that's kind of the problem as well, is that the Bretonia can afford to go so wide with how cheap their army is in that yeah. area. Like, Five peasants and six archers is a big area that you can't really shut down with two manacles. There's too much. Yeah, they, they just have such a high volume of fire that they can shred any low armor unit that Norska has and any monsters that they have uh, with the fire arrows dealing with any trolls. Trolls. The only thing I can think of is, is manticores. Just double or triple manticores. And uh, yeah, they tear around them quickly, maybe, but they get shot yeah. as well quite a bit. But uh, they the, get in the, the Knights of the, the Realm. Purpose... The, the yeah. Knights of the Realm backlane goes with it pretty roughly as well. That, that, yeah, the thing is that, like, if you're not bringing manticores, uh, you don't have a means of dealing with the archers as your infantry is engaging the peasants. Because you need something to force the Petronian player to either choose, do I engage that's, their infantry yeah. and lose the uh, lose my archers, or do I that's basically the problem the though. or I lose my peasants and then lose my archers? That's basically the problem me and Cap came to, was like, see, against most factions that bring this many missiles, it's just like, yeah, sure, like just shut the missiles down, they've brought too much 
ranged, like it's their fault. But their range is that cheap, and they have so much of it that the yeah. problem I always have is I can't get to their missiles. I just can't, can't shut it down, no. no matter what I do. I just can't do it. Because usually the yeah, problem with, with taking out of range is it's usually expensive range, so that you have to take money away from protecting them. But in this scenario, you've got like... Like this is the average dwarf ranged amount of money they'd spend on like average dwarf range and they have all this cab yeah. to protect with still this really yeah. expensive yeah. cab as well they can I, still I'd, deploy. Say, I'd say the, the only way you'd really deal with this as norska is bringing like double manticores and timing your charge with manticores hmm. at the same time as your infantry is getting into range of the peasants to either if your opponent forgot to turn off skirmish to push them away wipe out the peasants because once the peasants are gone the peasant mobs are gone you now you have peasant bowmen them. yeah you you now have peasant bowmen that can't protect that aren't protected anymore hmm. that's why the peasant mob kind of scares me a little and it's like uh you could peasant just... mob or op op peasant mob best thing in the game <laughs> yeah peasant mob are actually op well, that's my general opinion anyway we have uh some replays to look at yeah. okay i have a replay i can show uh for green skins actually let me check if i have any other ones here versus dwarf Oh, wait, it's not a good game. I just had it today. It's not good. Um, let me just see if there's any other ones for future. No, that was from the last session, to be honest. So it's just this one. This one. Here you I can see. Green skin replays of someone, please. This build I would bring against dwarves. Um, most of this seems pretty average. I bought these because I just had to make for money. I could have just taken another unit of. I probably should have just taken another unit of um, regular. Um, what are they called? The uh, not laying pump wagons, yeah. Not, yeah. I didn't see Grom in this build. Yeah, you can also yeah. bring Grom. It's well instead of Grimble. Oh, Grimble Works pretty really well equally. Up with oh. dwarf lords, though. So, because first dwarf mistake here is they didn't have any <laughs> slayers in the back line. And I had a lot of squigs coming around in the back line. I think the problem was that he's sat in the corner of the map. He's also sat in the corner of the map. Yeah. Right, so he's, he's moving away from it, so. Was this a tournament game? Yeah, this was in the World Championship. Wow, did you immediately get banned? <laughs> wow! He actually stopped here, he was breaking banner rules at this point because he wasn't moving. Well, he I mean, was, he was, break, he he was breaking banner game. rules the second he spawned that close to the edge of the map. Yeah. He's back there. That is a bit too close. But actually, for draws, is it that close? I think it only depends on mobility. That... No, it was definitely that close. Yeah, um... But these, basically, but yeah. for the dwarf build, these are literally just here to kill gyrocopters. Because obviously, if you don't have anything to kill the gyrocopters, then they're just going to keep Kills. spraying through. So these are literally just here, just to counter the gyrocopters. Uh, these especially because of the armor piercing. But. Also, if you want to bring someone like Wazag, you really do need to bring those units to deal with them. Because uh, a single gyrocopter can kill Wazag by just easily, shooting him. Yeah. Here I have, for my leadership tool, um, Grimgore, I think. Do you want to start? I usually bring Rom, but I brought Grimgore this time because I was so, like, why not? I'll give him go. He's legit just sitting there. He's just sitting there. Um, he yes, he, he's there. He's about to start firing now. So, uh, I took Orc Shaman with the two expensive spells because the rest are usually only good against low armor. So, Foot of Gork can do quite a fair size amount of damage to dwarfs with how tight their formation is. Um, and here we go because, especially because of how tight formations um, dwarf boxes usually get, you can usually affect a lot of your units with them. Um, with them, um, here we go. Here you can see he's shooting at Orc boys with Orc and guns. When black orcs are in range, he does start shooting at um, Grimgor. Oh, he shoots at Grimgor. He kills Grimgor. I don't believe Grimgor does much until he gets to the front line. He gets shot at by um, the old organ guns. Yeah, but due to Grimgor's relatively low cost, it doesn't actually hurt the army as no, much. For as the record, think. I was playing EU4 while this game was going on, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was your. your yeah, that, that's why these got shot at quite nastily. So, uh, okay, looking so here we go, Foot of Gore going down right here. Oh, he gets no. away with this unit. But the miners are gone. Pretty prompt. They still managed to throw, but they still got plenty of ammo. Half the models are yeah, gone though, so that's going to uh, reduce a lot of the damage they do. That's a foot that was not very cash money. And here we're going all these in here with their armor piercing and their anti infantry. They're the perfect unit for this matchup. They can run into Thunderers, destroy the Thunderers, especially these ones which have missile resistance. Going after the Trolk, Lion right. Drakes. You have these. The Snotling pub wagons, you really need to distract the miners before they're able to throw into your cheap infantry like they're doing here. This situation here, because you see just how much the orc boys get melted by the old uh, throwing mine blasting charges. So you have the um, pump wagons just to tie them up so your infantry can get engaged with them. Also the Logi bogies, yeah, spore spoders, yeah, that's the thing. Nice. To this day, I'm not entirely sure what they do, but they do something. Big smoke. 
firing some just extra shots in here. These can be good against Slayers because obviously Slayers lack armor or anything. So these can be good to actually outskirt Mr. Dwarfs with. You see just how the backline is just so compromised here. The, if you bring the Mage of Marauders, you also have an armor piercing unit that can sit and just shoot dwarves. And yeah, them quite casually. Because usually they need to be shooting at more important things that they won't fire at a Goblin Wolf unit with their like heavy expensive guns. Here we see yeah. poor Grimgor is got crumped by old Ungrim. Wars going down, which will help the front line fight immediately, especially seeing as this is all dwarf warriors, which actually doesn't do that well against green skins. Long beards would have been yeah. a better choice as a front line. Yeah, actually, uh, a point on like focusing only to snipe his uh, Willow's Lord doesn't mm. didn't really help his army too much because yeah. because of that the Black Orcs are still alive. All Black the Orcs are still, alive. are still alive. The squid is squid. It's not like everything. Everything, yeah. everything is still in his army is still alive. Sure, he might have lost his lord, and that's a morale buff, uh, debuff. But he, the He's rest of his army, strong. all the important units are still alive mm. because Umgrim is unbreakable. Sure, but mm. he can't beat an entire orc army. Umgrim could probably break Grimgore one on one, to be honest. So you don't yeah, really need to start shooting him he has, like, all the he other has, guns. Like 80, 80 like uh, weapons. Or yeah, when he, he gets his ability pop, he gets like a very high end buff. It's, I think, 800. Yeah, it's a lot. Ridiculous. That's, that's about, yeah, it's about 800 there. And, but he takes more damage, but that doesn't matter because he's unbreakable anyway. Yeah, so he's not going to run anywhere, which is good. Uh, at this point, everything's just broken. All that's left is uh, Ungrim. Yeah, and being chased off. Everything else is just getting chased off. Because you have the mobility, if a single thing runs away, then you can just chase it off with the squigs. The squigs can just keep on that, or, or the snotling top wagons, or just anything. You have so much mobility that if anything leaves the box, it's dead. And it's just an Ungrim now to die, to take the dust. And the thing was, he went he went for that big boxy thing, but with basic dwarf warriors. Yeah, too. not long beards. Which, yeah, if he had long beards, he might have had a better chance. But without without uh, without meaty uh, units to hold the line, they just collapsed. Hmm. Oh yeah, so you see just the value that that oh squeaks can get in the back line, dealing with the range to clean that up. Even even just these, a thousand gold value, and they didn't even have the gyrocopters, which is their preferred target. Starting yeah. pump wagons. Okay, that one died apparently. Uh, that one did pretty good for its cost, but really those are just there to tie up. They're not there for a lot of value. They're effectively tiny chariots. Yeah, that you can run into deal with. There are piercing, so that's nice. So. Let's see, is there any replays posted in the chat? I don't have a green skin versus uh, dwarf. Do there any green skins on Norska replays? There's okay. one here. I don't. I don't have any recent ones. So. This was from. Uh, can you actually deal no, with two to one. three anti-large gyros with just two skirmish gap? Um, those two. They're enough to screen off at least. At the very least, they can keep them away for so long that um, the gyrocopters won't be able to get the value because the skirmishing. Force will mm -hmm. be able to keep the giant couples away long enough that you, you're a rush build, so you're going to be rushing in, killing his dwarves as fast as possible. By the time you've killed all the dwarves, those gyrocopters might have just finished off your skirmish cav. But usually, you just need the two units. And also, if they're putting three units of gyrocopters into the air, that's less money on the ground, meaning you'll be able to overwhelm their ground forces quicker. Yeah, and, and so as long as you'll find that killed a lot quicker. Either. Yeah, it's like the scenario of someone taking their expensive ass cavalry and chasing your. Uh, like wolf archers sure yeah you're not doing any damage to them but they're never going to catch the unit and it's being taken out of the fight hmm. so yeah oh actually we do have a video from some trainee battles actually here so i can use this as a, an example here we have our own gaz and grindelwald playing off oh. 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 Who wins? Ooh. Place your bets. Place your bets on who wins. Is it the War or the Supreme? Hey man, when you can just pay for everything. Just the buy, Empire pay to win. win. Yeah, literally Empire is pay to win, right? Battle of the Gulf. Empire, looks a, good a, win. Empire looks a bit better here, I think. You think Empire is going to win here? Uh, they look a little bit bare. A little bit bare. Like, well, also, Empire has. Oh, well, they have no the pistol ears! Where's no. the pistol ears? Alright. They, they technically have more skirmishers than the. Mm. Do, yeah, so the so orc skirmishers can perform quite well. But um, obviously, here we've got Goblin Frontline, with the, which basically just acts as the shield for the big guns in the back. 
Um, not normally needed against Empire because Orc Boys will crump any front line at normally anyway. So you don't really need this mix. You can just bring a line of Orc Boys to ram in and destroy the Empire front line. You've got the squad here. Wurzag, Black Orc Big Boss and Stone Trolls. Stone Trolls are Stone Trolls. Squad. That's quite a mobile call we've got going on here. We've got um, some grenade launchers and some um, outriders. Three units of outriders. No, two units of regular outriders, two units of um, grenade launchers. Here they're definitely getting yeah, the engagement I much better off because they're firing at the melee cav instead of trying to counter skirmish. And you can see they're quite taking these damn spider riders. They're definitely taking damage from those outriders. Not to mention that the all the anti cav cav is on this side. Really, it needs to be over here, making sure that they can't get caught by these um, Empire Knights because Orc Boar Big Guns will demolish Empire Knights any day of the week. I'd say the uh, grenade launchers are a bit wasted, though. They should be in the front line. Yeah, they definitely should be firing into these. Um, here they're trying to win the skirmish fight, I suppose, but they can do that pretty well with the Outriders. Here, he could very well. He has the range advantage. These have a much wider range than these. He could definitely be running away. But he's take and he's left them off skirmish mode. So oh, there goes his no. entire skirmish fight. He's lost oh, all the no. mobility. That's going to be a huge detriment to the rest of the game. Frontline fight is going as you expected. It's Greenskin frontline versus Empire frontline. Greenskin's going to win that. Even with just petty goblins against Spearman, they'll cleave through quite nicely. Yeah, he's got a un units in the back line. He's not really got anything. You'd expect something back here to protect, but there isn't. So it's weird that he's put this much into the front line. It, yeah, well, and the thing is, he's put a lot of, like, chaff into Front line, including like mm. swords and stuff. If you just brought like three units of great swords instead of like all the swordsmen, that would work a lot. Like, yeah, he, those would just chop their way through the green skins, and the, even the stone trolls would have trouble dealing with them because they're armor piercing. Here you can see just all of the green skins skirmish cav is gone now. It's been chased off, yeah. it's been it's, it's gone. There goes the entire mobility, pretty much, for the green skins, which will but definitely now, probably come back to hurt them. Yeah. But as for the front line fight, that is very much going in the favor of the, uh, the green skins. They're catching onto the war wagons. It's often a mistake is people think they need to turn off skirmish mode, but it's very much okay to leave on. Skirmish mode should only really be turned off stationary units that you want to remain still. Which, yeah, as for mo mobile cool. units or war wagons, you want them to be moving. Uh, you don't care if they're that way. A good example of you know, you can turn your skirmish mode off is like uh, play, like Lobineers for Skaven or uh, Marauder Hunters, because the range is so short that it's about the range of the skirmish as well. Yeah. So they won't even they might even end up finding a volley in some cases if you um, leave skirmish mode on. Yeah. So it is often a poor idea to turn off um, skirmish mode, but it's also a poor idea to leave on. In some it depends on the units. It's very yeah, it, it depends on, on that and also your ability to micro. to micro as well. This is quite the blob oh. going on. Yeah. Um, even tell what's happening in there. Can't even tell it. It's a lot of fighting. I believe it's only one unit of Empire Knights versus. Yeah. This is way too much because commitment to a unit of Empire Knights. Yeah. Especially when you've got the grenade launchers and the outriders I'm, over here, this I'm is assuming. an amazingly good block for sure. I'm assuming. Oh yeah, they have both are guilt, so that's. What and they have a warrior. Oh, no transmutation. No transmutation of lead. Oh, uh, interesting. Oh. Okay, I don't think he's brought final final No, he has not brought final so transmutation. Maybe he's got outriders <gasps> just shooting into the blob. And there's not really much the greenskins have left to do with to do with that. You've got these orc boys. You could probably just be able to chase them off the orc boys. Eventually, they'd catch them on the edge of the map. But as you can see here, he's just throwing everything at Balthazar Gel. Oh, okay, and he oh, no. let Balthazar Gel get caught. But he has got caught, but I don't believe anything is really getting close to him. Uh, he's got out. Oh, and he stands here, oh. heavy damage coming down. This is just a very good whittling kind of scenario where, despite having the advantage, if, if all of this was left as it is, there's no way Empire could win. Assuming these had no ammo. It's very unlikely, but here he's just offering the perfect situation. He's blobbing up in an amazing circle to take advantage.